the Clinton corporate wing, establishment wing of the Democratic Party has just declared war on the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist. I worked as a research engineer in telecommunications. Uh, there is something that has occurred in the last few days. It's being described as a purge of the Democratic Party here. Um, and probably the best article to read is The Intercept. In a nutshell, key progressives that were affiliated in some way or another with the Sanders wing of the party the, or the left wing of the party, or whatever you want to call it, uh, have been stripped uh, massively of their representation. And uh, adding insult to injury, Donna Brazil, who is the only person that we have an email of brazenly showing uh, her sending a debate question to the Clinton campaign, which uh, caused her uh, uh, Jake Tapper to uh, publicly come out and blast her, uh, has uh, been appointed to the Rules Committee. So this is an act of just sabotage. Canova has addressed this. Jimmy Dore has addressed this. If you want to search for people, Tim Black has an excellent piece on this. So, you know, this is very interesting because it seems like the Democratic Party, it would be madness to alienate its entire left wing. It looks like a party willing to stay in the political wilderness and fight to the right with the Republican parties about the dividing line between their two camps. <laughs> what we have is that of 25 to 28 percent of Americans identify with each party now. The independents actually outnumber is a larger party, as it were, than either the Democrats or the Republicans by a long shot. Democrat strategy apparently is to shrink uh, the enthusiasm base to the left, having nowhere else to go, uh, and to uh, fight for the um, centrist and conservative vote and become more and more conservative. Britain, who have come here, who observed American politics, said that actually the Democratic Party was more like the conservative party in England. The Labour Party is vastly more radical than the Democratic Party. So England's right-wing party is equal to America's Democratic Party, according to some young folks that I watched being interviewed who were observing elections, political science students. Uh, an 87-year-old uh, hero of Israel and also one of the first Israelis to meet with Yasser Arafat, if I'm not mistaken, Uri Avneri, and uh, my uh, brother-in-law who's uh, Jewish and lives in Chile said, okay, if you want to know what to think about Israel from a uh, you know non-Likud point of view, Uri Avneri is a man. Uh, and he wrote an article about Israeli politics, which reminds me a great deal of American politics right now. And uh, it starts with one day the Israeli Labor Party felt that it needed a new leader. That happens to this party every couple of years. The party's in bad shape. It looks more like a political corpse than a living organism. Wanted a new leader. Charismatic, energetic, enthusiastic. So they found Avi Gabay. Why him? Nobody is really sure. Avi Gabay has no visible qualities of political leadership, no charisma at all, no special energy, no enthusiasm in himself, and no ability to inspire enthusiasm in others. Worked at a mobile phone uh, uh, industry. Um, he joined a moderate right-wing party. Uh, then he resigned and joined labor. Uh, he is an Oriental Jew, identity politics. Uh, since labor is considered Ashkenazi, this is a point. Uh, then... He says he won't work with the Arabs, uh, so uh, sort of right wing, and he also uh, praises the settlements. So basically, he is fawning over the conservative party's base, uh, and um, declared we have no partner for peace, and it's clear that this uh, road uh, will lead nowhere for labor. Um, but to have a right-wing extremist as a uh, head of their party. Um, and so he concludes in this article that Labour isn't really interested in winning and governing. Um, he thinks maybe they're content with being a minority party. And so when you think about it, what difference does it make to the Democrats? Obviously, they'd love to have the White House, but there's plenty of perks to be the minority party. Uh, the places where 
uh, uh, strong Democratic congressmen have holds. It's only five or six seats in the election cycle that are at risk. They might pick up a few here or there. With a skirmishing between these two shrunken parties, willing to let the Republicans uh, have the rule, um, as long as they don't have to share the Democratic Party with the grassroots. The party has been taken from the workers and the people, and this is clear in every way how they run their show. Uh, most of my family are lifelong Democrats, so it gives me no great joy to say this. So we see a deliberately losing strategy because uh, these people don't lose. They continue to cling to power as the country and the party crashes and burns. But their actual agenda is to replicate many Republican positions and carving out a few socially liberal cultural divide issues, the environment certainly, uh, at least superficially, less pollution would be, you could say, the motto of the Democratic Party. And with Trump, it's more pollution, apparently. This incredibly shabby treatment, um, unless there's a miracle between now and the next few days ahead when there's a so-called unity convention after the purge of the progressives, we should really probably before the unique convention have the mass resignation uh, of anyone involved and uh, uh, for 2020 at least look at starting a people's party that uh, targets uh, what I suggest is that we develop an arrangement where libertarians, independents, greens, disaffected republicans and disaffected democrats band together in some fashion to deal with reform. And uh, one is uh, money in politics, getting money out of politics, and the other is uh, to maybe have a constitutional convention, some method we could use to uh, pry loose government from the hold of these two increasingly out of touch parties. Of to the Tim Black and Jimmy Dore and uh, and such people is that this is not a strategy for winning. It's a strategy for uh, controlling a monopoly on the minority power position in the United States of America. Uh, my name is Alexander Hagan. Good night and good luck.